So let's look at a better option then than doing this manual form of redirection. Well, what we can do is use a mechanism of creating an auto switch. Therefore, we can automatically switch between SSL and non-SSL pages whenever we want to. If you're going to do this using hyperlinks, you would have to put in the full path of the actual hyperlink, which would, you wouldn't want to do. It wouldn't be very flexible. The other reason you would like to do this is because normally once you actually go to a SSL page, from then on, if you're using relative links, all of your other pages will also use SSL. This is not good from the performance of your website's point of view because you're encrypting every page even though you may not need to. So a nice way around this is to create a new HTTP module to let the system automatically switch to SSL or non-SSL just with some settings in the web.config file. So that's what we're going to do here is use the web.config file to control which pages or folders should be secured. To do this I've taken some code that I found a little while ago off the internet and modified it significantly. I'm not going to go through all of the details of this actual library. The library is available for you to download if you wish to for the source code. I'm just going to focus on the main bits of interest. So this is a class library that we've actually created here with no special references. We've made it a strong name class library just so that if we wanted to store it into the GAC we could then use it from any website that we wish to. The two important files that we're interested in is this web page module file and also this SSL helper file. And essentially what I've got in here is we're implementing our own class which implements the iHttp module interface. And there's an important method that we need to worry about called init. And effectively what init does is it allows you to choose which events you want to listen to. So the only event we care about is the begin request event of the application object and we're going to point it down to our event handler inside our code. So we're going to have a breakpoint in here and we'll actually step through and see what happens when the begin request comes in. So that's quite an important feature. The other important feature is inside our class that we've called SSL Helper and we've got two static methods on this class which we're going to step through called request secure page and request unsecure page. The remainder of the code in all of these various other classes are related to reading information from the config file which is essentially beyond the scope of this demonstration. So we have added a reference from the website to the SSL library but by default it won't actually use the SSL library unless we configure it in the web.config file. So in the web.config file I'm just going to uncomment some blocks of code here and we'll explain what they mean. The first block is to add a config sections element. This allows us to have our own section within the config file. So any section that's called secure web pages within this config file will automatically go and run the SSL library's secure web page section handler class. This section here essentially tells .NET how to handle this section here. So the secure web pages section we have to decide if we want to enable this or not. Now for testing purposes it's often quite useful to set this to false on your development machine because you don't necessarily want any of the code to execute while you're in testing mode. However if we now enable this and set it to true this will now be as if it's on the live server. I've added in an extra feature in here as well to allow you to specify the name of your web server from the HTTPS address. You don't have to do this but it may be useful if sometimes you want to redirect to a different HTTPS domain or web server than what your code is actually running within. So inside here we can place files and paths or we can place folders as well. We could have a directory tag in here. I'm only using the file path here. What it's essentially saying is this particular page in the website will be automatically secured. But as I said we could also have other items, we could have as, as many files as we like by just listing them one under the other. Alternatively we could actually go and add directories into here and actually add the path into the directory and then the entire directory would be safe. The final section is to actually link the module in to the actual pipeline. We do this by using the HTTP modules element, we add in our secure web page item and we point it to the class that needs to perform the functionality. 
So this is the bit that automatically syncs the begin init event into the actual code itself. We now should be ready to go with this, so we're just going to kick it off. We won't actually need, I should have pointed out, any more that code that was in the login page. So we're just going to take that out for the moment. We're going to remove the uh, auto redirect syntax that was in there, and we're going to let the actual library do it for us. We kick it off, and we should get our begin init event starting to fire in a moment when we, once we've actually linked the two in. So here it comes, here comes our init, and we're telling it to look at the begin request information. So now a request has been received, and now it needs to read various information from the, from the configuration file. So we're going to step over this line of code and keep stepping and you'll see that it'll check to see that settings are enabled so because we've enabled it it will actually check this feature and we're grabbing various information now certain things that we must ignore for example we don't want to do response.redirects on web services that would normally break the client we also don't need to bother doing response.redirects for any of the inbuilt.net files such as the trace.axd or the web resource.axd file so we're going to ignore those particular file extensions it's then going to go and start finding out various information and we'll get down to the important bit which is where it decides whether it should make this secure or not so at this point this one is not being made secure this particular request but what we'll do is we'll put a breakpoint in here and it, sooner or later it will then come down and tell it to actually request the secure version so it comes in and this time it is requesting the login page. The first one was requesting the default page. This is now requesting the login page. So we set this as being secure. That's in our list from our config file. So now what it's going to go and do is it's going to actually request a secure version and send that down. So the secure address comes down of the web server. That's passed in to our secure page. It then checks to see what the current address actually is. If the current address is already set to SSL, then it would start with HTTPS, not HTTP, and we wouldn't need to do anything to the request. However, it doesn't start with the right thing, so we're basically going to reset the actual path itself to HTTPS this time. And we're going to do a response.redirect and replace that information. We replace the information in the string, and then we do a response.redirect. So this is where it's going to go and redirect to. This time when it comes in, it will actually be pointing to the correct thing. So it knows it needs to be secure, but the advantage this time is it actually already is secure. So it comes in, it knows that it doesn't start with HTTP, it skips this code altogether, and we just drop into the normal .NET handling routines at this stage. So you can see we've automatically redirected to HTTPS without any effort whatsoever. The nice thing is if we do this without debugging, then it's all quite seamless. The other thing is, what's even more impressive, is it will actually switch back from HTTPS to HTTP, which is why you get this warning saying you're about to be redirected to a connection that's not secure. We say yes to this, and as you can see, HTTP, it's not secure anymore. Okay, so in this demonstration we've looked at how to install an SSL certificate on our web server, how to then redirect by using a local redirection in the login page, and also how to do an automatic way of switching by using our SSL library. If you'd like to download the code, you'll find that next to this uh, demonstration, next to this video. You can also email me any questions you have at dugar at blackbearit.com. Thanks for your time.